Hello, I'm Charlotte and this is Books and Bargains. Today I'm coming to you with my October wrap up and October was a pretty good month. I'd say more in terms of quality of books than quantity. I completely threw my TBR out the window <laughs> and just went with what I felt like and it works as it always does. I'm still not sure on my lighting setup. I've got a ring light on today. Um, yeah, and I'm just playing around with it. So hope you like it. So in October, I read 11 books, which was two books up from November. My physical TBR currently stands at 820, which is 26 down from last month. I've been having a bit of a clear out, a bit of a declutter. That is, like I say, my physical TBR. My net galley percentage is up 1% to 60%. I'm still trying to get to that magical 80. But at the time of filming, I still have 92 unread books on my net galley. And this is down one from last month, but that's less reading and more just, I don't know, I think I've read more than that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what else can I say? That is where it stands. I am currently slightly taking part in NetGalley's November loosely to try and get that down. Um, yeah, and the ratings this month, my average rating was a 3.90 compared to last month's 3.77. So it is coming up. I think that's to do with the fact that if I'm not enjoying a book now, I generally DNF it because life is too short to carry on reading books that you aren't enjoying. So this month I read a whole three five stars, five four stars, two three stars and one two star read with my favourite book of October being Every Heart a Doorway by Sean and Maguire. I've been being told to pick this one up for a while and I'm so glad that I finally did. I did just want to go straight on to the next book and binge read the series, but I don't own them. I can't get it at the library and I'm currently doing a no spend November. So hopefully I can get my husband to purchase them for Christmas. This is going to be the last vlog style wrap up that you see. I am now weekly vlogging again and what are we on now? It's like the 3rd of November. So I've been doing it like three days, really enjoying it. And when I finish a book, I'm going to include it in those weekly vlogs. So there will still be a wrap up at the end of each month. It just won't be vlog style. And without further ado, let's get into the vlog style clips. Good. I never know whether to say morning, afternoon, evening. <laughs> it is actually Saturday the 9th of October. It is the afternoon slash evening as I'm filming this. But I have finished three books already and DNF'd one. Have I finished three or have I finished more now? No, I think I finished three and DNF'd one and haven't updated you. And I've just flicked my hair bubble somewhere and I have no idea where that has gone. Anyway, that is beside the point. I am rambling. So the first book that I finished was Every Day in December by Kitty Wilson. I was kindly sent this by Kitty herself and it's my very first personalised sign book. So when I got this, I was a little bit nervous because I thought, oh God, what if I hate this? I didn't need to worry. I was also approved on NetGalley for the audiobook of this and... I think Victoria would love this. Now, hear me out, Victoria. I know you're watching this. This is set between Bristol and Bath. And our main character, Belle, has a love of Shakespeare. So most of the chapters start with a Shakespeare quote. Now, you all know I haven't really got into Shakespeare and I need to because this book, this book got a four star and a, I would say it's more of a four and a half star if I gave half stars. There was just a little bit towards the end when um, the miscommunication trope was there. And yeah, I didn't like that bit, but that was such a small bit of the plot. Um, I don't know 
know what to say about this. It made me laugh and cry. Now, I'm a big crybaby anyway. I don't like books that are really just sad. I can cope with sad moments in books, but I want the overall to be joy, especially when it's a Christmas book. And for a Christmas book, I said this, I DNF'd last month Sarah Morgan's Christmas Escape because I got 40% in. And I was just like, where is the Christmas cheese? This book has got the Christmas cheese. It's got the dates. It's got an overexcited child. And I don't really like children, which is why one thing that I like about this, it's not our main character's child. It's her friend's child. And she's just cool Auntie Belle that I can cope with because then we don't have to deal with the children all the time. They can just be there for a bit of light heartedness. So yeah, love this book. And uh, yeah, that is definitely one of the picks. I've had a bit, it's been a bit hit and miss this year so far with Christmas books and this one was definitely a hit. Now the second one I had via NetGalley and unfortunately this one was a miss. This was The Killer in the Snow. Now, this is the second in the Christmas Killer series, the Alex Pine Detective series. And whereas the first book that I read last year was leading up to Christmas, this one was set just after Christmas. And to be honest, this one was set in a little bit of a three star through most of it. It was kind of bang average. I was enjoying it, just going with the flow, trying to work out what had happened. I, again, as with the first book, about, I'd say about 40% through, I knew what was going, well, I didn't fully know what was going on, but I had an inkling, and there was one, like, plot point that I'd guessed. And then, if you are planning to read this book, hand is up, I saw Kaz from Cats and Cameras do this, so when the hand comes down again, that's when the potential spoilers will finish. But there was just this trope of the mother thought the house was haunted and could hear noises and everyone was like oh well she's a bit mentally unstable and they spoke to a clairvoyant who said yeah she was mentally unstable and it just it didn't sit right with me so in the end I took it down to a two star and I don't think I'd be con continuing on with the series I am getting into crime series and I'm going to be reading the Nikki French series that Jen Campbell has gone on about. If you don't follow Jen Campbell, she did a brilliant video recently about all of Nikki French's books, which I'll leave below if you want to go and watch it. I'm pretty sure if you follow me, you follow Jen. Jen's got like 600 million subscribers or something like that. Um, <laughs> and then, what's that? Oh, let's go to the DNF next, although it wasn't the DNF that I read next, but then I just want to gush about the five star. So, the DNF was The Coven by Lizzie Fry. Now, I picked this up. This has been on my net galley for way longer than it should. And I picked it up in February, I believe. January or February. It must have been January because the release date was February. Um, and I just couldn't get into it. But I thought, do you know what? It's about witches. So maybe if I wait till the witchy season... I'll enjoy it more and I just didn't I just couldn't connect with it I can deal with a bit of a plot that doesn't isn't sure where it's going in my head as long as it then has really great characters but it had nothing for me and I just yeah just couldn't get into it so I dnf that one and then the book that I gave five stars this was Sean and Maguire's Every Heart a Doorway I've had this a long time and have been reluctant to pick it up because I didn't want it to not live up to the hype. But this definitely, definitely lived up to the hype. Think magical children, but also, I mean, this this quote on the front says, um, we know the story isn't true, but it is, it is truth. And yeah, it was just... I devoured it in one day. I literally sat any time I had on this one day reading it because I didn't want to go to sleep until I'd finished it. And now I'm desperate to get my hands on the rest of the series. So that they are the books that I've read so far. I will be back with you when I've got another update. Hello. Can I even call myself a booktuber right now? 
I'm coming to you today with a DNF and that is the book club by CJ Cooper. Now, I don't know what is wrong with me this month. I'm just not reading any good thrillers. Um, I read Killer in the Snow and gave that a two star. I DNF this, but that was going to be somewhere around a two or three star. And it was just, I mean, I read a good 50% of this. So I feel like I've wasted my life. Um, but it was just boring. Just a very mediocre domestic thriller. And I don't care what happens. And I think that's the main thing for me in a thriller. I have to either like really like the characters or really dislike them and yeah the characters are just flat so yeah that's another dnf so it is now the 12th or 13th i think it's the 13th of october and i have finished three books two that i loved one that i couldn't care less and yeah that is how the cookie crumbles good afternoon it is the 20 something of october now as you can probably tell i've got this horrible cold it isn't covid i have done multiple pcr and lateral flow tests which i do anyway in my job role if you don't know i am a support worker for people with learning disabilities who are classed as vulnerable adults but that's not what you're here for since I last updated you, I have finished three books and I'm just on the very cusp of finishing a few more. I am trying. So I've slightly mentioned on my Instagram. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry if you can hear the bath running, but I am running the hottest, bubbliest bath known to man and cannot wait to get into it. Anyway, I've mentioned on my Instagram that from November, I'm going to go back to doing weekly vlogs, I think. Still not sure yet, but this, if if I do do that, October will be my last, like, vlog style wrap up because I will be talking in each weekly vlog about any book mail that I get, any books that I finish, what I'm currently reading. And yeah, I'm going to do that for November and December and just see how you guys like it. However, I will still each month do a wrap up for people that don't want to watch the vlogs but it just won't be vlog style it will be the kind of sit down talk about each book and i'm rambling now <laughs> so the first book that i finished was the strange world travel agency by ld lipinski i picked this up because i've been really struggling to read so i wanted to start reading spooky stuff but i couldn't seem to get into it don't know what's been there's been some weird brain stuff going on the past couple of weeks so after i read every heart a doorway i was like you know what i'm gonna pick up some middle grade kind of adventure and this was perfect this has a kind of undertone of climate change i believe um it's just done so subtly and basically it's about a young protagonist flick who has moved town she has a baby brother and a mum and dad and she's a little bit of a kind of moody 12 year old but I, I get it flick does not want to be left looking after the baby and i totally get that um and one day she wanders into the strange world's travel agency where she makes friends with jonathan and from the strange world's travel agency you can travel to other worlds through these suitcases and it was just magical. I I loved the travel I loved the travel elements to it. I loved the adventure and the kind of mystery going on. It has ended on a little bit of a cliffhanger for my liking, but I have the second book, so I can get into that soon. And I gave that four stars. I thought it was brilliant. I didn't think it was too scary. There's some middle grades that I've been reading recently, which are so scary and i don't know if that's just that i'm a wuss but yeah i i really enjoyed that one so can't wait to start the next book i then read the kiss quotient and i have some thoughts about this i've had this on my tbr for quite a while and then i was flicking through my kindle unlimited and this was on there so i thought you know what i'm gonna read that and i loved it but i 
I loved it and I hated it at the same time. So firstly, if you follow Kat from Bruise and Review, she has mentioned this. I'm not autistic myself, but she is. So I always try and listen to Own Voices reviewers where possible and totally agree with what she was saying in that I don't like the setup of this book. I don't like... So basically, our main character is autistic and she decides to seek the services of a male escort to teach her how to be in a relationship and have sex, etc. I didn't like that setup, but then I did enjoy the rest of the story. So most of the story was sitting around a four star for me. This is very steamy, like the... Um, Talia Hibbert's series however nowhere near as good sorry but just got to say that these this book did not live up to um those I liked the different cultures in this I liked I liked a lot of it however I did find it a bit slow at points and the one thing especially that made me take it down to a three star is our main character refers to her vagina as her sex I hate that in books it was the same in Fifty Shades of Grey it's like if we can say cock and we can say penis and we can use proper words for male anatomy let's do the same for the female anatomy um yeah so that was a three star I did love one thing I really loved about this is how both the characters grew throughout the book like there was a lot of the kind of miscommunication trope but I didn't mind it so much because as the characters grew and grew into themselves they managed to you know get that sorted so I did like this like I say it's a three star so it wasn't a bad book there were just some things that a I don't think it fully lived up to the hype for me am I going to continue with the next book I haven't decided yet I haven't decided so this is a trilogy I believe and it's not a no but it's not one that I'm going to be rushing out to get the next one straight away and the last book that I finished I have been doing my very infamous reading with subtitles with this book and that is Heidi Swain's Poppy's Recipe for Life this is the second book in the Nightingale Square series and actually it has been announced this week that the fourth book is coming next year so I cannot wait I'm a total Heidi Swain fangirl. It's taken me years to actually start reading Heidi Swain. And now that I have, I don't think there's any of her books that I've rated less than a four star. This, again, was a four star. The only reason it didn't get a five was because I didn't fully like the way one of our characters was, was treated at the beginning and as I talked about in the last one and has been brought up in my book club if you don't know what I'm talking about I run the cozy blanket book club over on patreon and we read cozy books every month and yeah I there was little bits of this that I found a bit slow and some of the decisions our character made and the way she treated people I was a little bit on the fence about but I did enjoy this one more than the first book in the series marginally because I quite enjoyed the first book as well um but basically Poppy moves into Nightingale Square and we go from there the Nightingale Square books are all kind of centered around this community garden a prosperous place and I really love that sense of community I think in the world at the moment communities are keeping people alive I think we're such shut off from our neighbours and things and I find it really strange especially where I live now grew up in a real community and hopefully I'd like to be part of that again but anyway sidetracking here thought this book was great gave that a five star a uh, four star and the Cozy Blanket Book Club will be reading The Winter Garden, which is book three in this series in November. And yeah, hope you can join us. So firstly, I have these new lights, which are dimmable and I can change the colour on them. I like this look, like Lady of the Night. Maybe a bit of blue moon. Or oh, rainbow. 
or like disco or just this like twinkly lights or even faster disco or this one but I think I'm going to get distracted by them so let's go back to a nice neutral there we go so it is the 20 something of October 22nd of October and yesterday I finished two books which were both pretty fantastic so first of all I read The Haunting of Avalyn Jones by Phil Hicks I picked this up because I have the sequel to this on NetGalley that I want to read and I'm going to start that today this book was so flipping creepy so Phil Hicks sets this scene of like a seaside town in the winter so when there's no tourists it's a bit dead and the wind rolls off the sea and I don't really want to tell you much about this book because it's a short read but it creeped me tf out I'm glad that I wasn't on my own last night because I don't think I'd have been able to sleep um <laughs> So that's that for this one. Hang on, let me put a bit more light on, I think. Where's my other one? There we go. But yeah, this... I don't know how this is marketed as middle grade because, like I say, scared the absolute bejeebas out of me. But if you just want a proper creepy Halloween read, I'm going to suggest this one. I gave it four star because I felt the ending could have been done better. But up until that point, it was a five star. So that's that one. And then a book that is a five star. This was sent to me from Book Break and favourite PR package I've ever got because it was all cat related. And it is The Cat Who Saved Books by Suzuki Natsukawa. I hope I've said that right. This book has shot up to one of my favourites of the year so far. I did sit yesterday and went through all the five stars that I've read this year. Some I then downgraded to four stars on reflection, but oh boy, it's going to be hard to pick my top 10. This book just absolutely took my soul. It's one of those books that while not a lot happens, I think this would be the perfect gift for any book lover. And if you're a book lover and a cat lover like me, you'd get 10 out of 10 brownie points for buying this as a gift it's how do i describe this if you've read if cats disappeared from the world this book reminded me a lot of that but different but still the philosophy that was behind the story i just thought was wonderful and there's some quotes that i've highlighted on my kindle for this that i was just like I need to get that tattooed on my body all about books and their soul and what it means to be a book lover and yeah mwah, chef's kiss 10 out of 10 five star highly highly recommend good morning you have to excuse the hair <laughs> it is the morning of the 1st of november i am still very much in my chronic fatigue flare but I'm at work on the late today, so I had a bath this morning to try and... I'm having a lot of, like, muscular pain, so I thought a hot bath would help. And it has helped, but it's also made my core temperature about, like, 50,000 degrees. So, anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I am, tomorrow, starting a new weekly vlog, so this is going to be my last vlog-style clip for the wrap-up. What I've decided to do is when I finish a book, I will talk about it in my weekly vlog. And then at the end of each month, for people that don't want to watch the vlogs, I will do another wrap up, but it won't be vlog style. I'm just kind of playing about with it at the moment. I'm going to see what you guys like. And yeah, I can't. Oh, I don't know what to do with my fringe. I think it needs a cut. It's like taking on a life of its own. Anyway not what we're here to talk about. So the first book that I finished over the weekend was The X-Hex by Erin Sterling. Now I really really enjoyed this book. I've seen a lot of people compare this to Hocus Pocus and I get that, I get the kind of town vibes but actually I think this is a lot more like Sabrina the Teenage Witch because 
especially at the beginning. I don't want to give anything away, but it's one of the taglines is never mix vodka with witchcraft. And the first like opening scene, I could see that being Sabrina. Also, her aunt Elaine is definitely Hilda and Zelda, like mixed into one. Um, this gets rather steamy though. So it's more like a grown up Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And this was perfect to read in October. I have given this a four star rather than a five because there were some bits in the middle where I don't think there was enough going on. But overall, really, really enjoyed the book. And I believe it's going to be part of a series. So if that is the case, I cannot wait to read the next one. And yeah, this was perfect October reading. And then talking about perfect October reading, a book that I've given a five star to. And that is Starfell, Willow Moss and the Forgotten Tale. Now, I knew exactly what I was going to say to you about this book, but then I realised that by saying the thing that I wanted to say, it would have given a massive, massive spoiler for book one. So instead, let me tell you about book one. Um, so book one follows a little witch, Willow, who is kind of made fun of in her family because they've all got really powerful magic and her magic seems to be finding lost things and the whole moral of it seems to be that you know all these powers are good and in the first book Moreg Vane who is the like most powerful witch in Starfell comes to find Willow for her talents and yeah there's just this beautiful cast of characters and again we follow the same characters in as in book one Willow again is needed to help but this one, I mean, I gave the first one a four star and this one just, just broke my little heart. Like for, for a middle grade book, there was just so much like representation in this and so much, but it was just done so well. Um, yeah, I really can't go into it anymore without giving spoilers for the first book. But if you are into witches and especially middle grade, I would pick up this series. I think it's really underrated and I loved it. Looking forward to picking up the next book. I'm really gutted though that I didn't get this one with sprayed edges because I've got the first one with sprayed edges. So I'll be on the lookout for that. And there you have it. That's everything that I read in October. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books and also what was your favourite book of October. And until next time, look after yourselves. Bye.